Good morning everybody! Today is a very very exciting day because we are off to Whitby. We are going to catch the train. In fact, we didn't realise this but from York to Whitby we've got to catch the train to Scarborough and then we've got a bus to take. And I'm thinking today because we're spending a night there. So we've got today and then Monday um, up in Whitby, we might stop off at Robin Hood's Bay, which um, seems like a lovely little town and have a wander around there. I'm very excited to explore Whitby. It's somewhere that I've been wanting to go to. I feel like I say this about anywhere in Yorkshire, but very much somewhere that I've been wanting to visit since I came to university in York. And there are so many great locations on my list. I am really, really glad to be taking this one off today. It was actually a birthday gift, my birthday gift from Shane's mum, which is so incredibly sweet. Uh, she really knew that we both wanted to go. And so she surprised me with it. Shane was fully, fully aware. I think he was a large part of the planning process. It's going to be a really exciting, is it fair to call it a staycation? Um, whilst everything is still very much up in the air, it's so nice to be getting away and exploring a new location very, very close to home. So I'm not going to keep Shane waiting any longer. We're going to head to the station, catch our train and I'm sure I'll catch up with you very, very soon. This is the best time to vlog because we are climbing up the stairs. We're meant to count the steps. I don't know if these are the steps we're supposed to count, but there's only a few here, so let's count. I think there's a rumour that on your way up to the Abbey, you're meant to count the steps. I'm not sure what for. I'm assuming good luck. That's what these things normally right, are nine. for. Step nine, oh, 10, <laughs> 11. <laughs> Well, I'm going to let you take over. Um, we made our way to Scarborough on the train and then we got on the bus which was just over an hour to Whitby and the bus ride was beautiful. Uh, I really feel like I'm out of breath because <laughs> of the step. Um, so I do apologise, I'll probably catch up with you a bit later on but the bus ride was so, so gorgeous. And we've just stopped at a view stop 
Um, so let me show you that. I do apologize for the footage, which most likely is incredibly shaky. The bus was very, very shaky, but the, the views were so, so beautiful. And let me show you what we're looking at now. So we're only a few steps into, into um, the walk to the Abbey. However, we just came from the harbour and the harbour again is really, really gorgeous. I love how moody the skies are looking at the minute. I really do love a moody seaside town. It's wonderful in the sunshine, but actually when it's on the verge of rain, um, it can look really, really wonderful and atmospheric. And speaking of the atmosphere, the harbour is absolutely packed, which is really nice to see. Everyone's still maintaining um, maintaining their distance, uh, so it's not unsafe necessarily, but it's just lovely to see little touristy towns like this thriving. Um, and we will definitely be returning to the harbour, so I'll show you around a bit more once we do. The views are wow that's incredible i've got to show you again um i was about to talk to you guys but you've got to see the view you've got to look at this view it is absolutely beautiful and you can hear the seagulls <laughs> as expected from a seaside town we keep forgetting how to how to count not forgetting how to count or we are forgetting to count them It's so windy. Can you tell I'm by the sea? We have just gone into the building behind us, which is the um, Whitby Abbey Museum, and it was closed. Only the gift shop was open, which I think is a bit bizarre. And now we're heading towards the Abbey, which Shane has been really keen to get into ASAP. Looks like we came up here to see it. We did, but I thought it would be something interesting. Um, in the museum and unfortunately it was closed.
and we've arrived into our beautiful little Airbnb which Shane and his mum chose. Let me give you a bit more of a tour. We've got a nice cozy kitchen. I don't think we'll get too much use out of this because we are only here for a night, but it's lovely. And then this gorgeous little living space, which is lovely. I'm sure we'll make the most of it. Let me show you the view outside. It's pretty darn nice. Lots and lots of greenery. And let's take you through to the bedroom. I hope I'm not making your stomachs turn with all of the shakiness. Oh, that's sweet. And there's the bedroom. Beautiful. I've got a little bathroom here, which I'm not really going to show you. I guess it's pretty mundane. So I've yet again got a kitchen in the background, but it's not my kitchen this time round. So as you would have seen from the clips, we went to the Abbey. I feel like that's my signature phrase. Um, as you would have seen already, we went to the Abbey, got lots and lots of useful pictures and videos it looked absolutely gorgeous and we had audio guides um that you get as part of the tour which was great found out lots of interesting tidbits for example um the fact that the whitby abbey was really inspired by the york minster which was being built at the time from 12 20 to 12 30 that was very interesting and it mentioned St. Mary's Abbey, which we've got in York, in the York um, Museum Gardens. And they do look very, very alike. And now we found out that there's a link that they were very much inspired by the same design. And um, there's a small museum area, which I said was closed because... I looked online, <laughs> we kind of took the wrong um, entry path in. We thought we'd go to the museum first and then visit the Abbey, or at least that's what I wanted to do because the Abbey is of course um, entirely outdoor and open plan. And so I assumed that the closing time would be um, different to the museum, which is a bit more enclosed. Um, however, there's a pathway through the Abbey, so you get to see the entire Abbey and then you go into the museum, um, which is deceptively small because the building itself, as you would have seen, looks absolutely huge. My arm's getting quite tired now. Um, and so, yes, we uh, looked around the Abbey, listened to the audio guide and then made our way into the museum, which again has a little bit more information about the Abbey and the monasteries which were in place at the time. And also, of course, Bram Stoker, who was inspired to write Dracula following his family holiday to Whitby. They came to Whitby in 1890 on a family holiday, him, his wife Florence and his son Irving, he wanted to explore, which he did, and he got the inspiration from predominantly the Abbey, um, as well as the city itself. Um, it is very, very gothic, the Abbey particularly. And the novel was published in 1901, and the rest is history. And at the museum, they also have the first edition of Dracula, signed by Bram Stoker. So that was all very, very interesting. Now that we've dropped our bags off, had a look around the flat, which is so, so sweet. Um, perfect location. It's right near the center of town, which is quite nice. I was going to say um, it's right in the center of town, but actually it's right next to a grand park. And as you would have seen from the view, in the window, uh, we've got lots of greenery around us and it's a really, really lovely cozy place. I'm looking forward to returning here with lots of snacks and watching some movies. But in the meantime, we're going to head to dinner. We both had breakfast this morning and haven't eaten since. And so I'm very, very much looking forward to my fish and chips and getting a nice cocktail and sitting probably by the harbour hopefully overlooking the sea, we'll have to see. So I will catch up with you once we've eaten because as you can tell, I'm getting many a mind blank.
I feel as though, I hope that's not coming across um, all too clearly, but I'm definitely beginning to flag. So I'll catch up with you once I've got some food in my system. So we've got a lovely little mirror here. So before we head out, I thought I would really quickly show you what I'm wearing because I've had a, a very, very quick outfit change because it was forecast to rain and it's lovely and sunny and it's forecast to rain tomorrow. So I thought if the forecast is correct, I might as well make the most of this dress um, and the warm sunshine and wear it out. This is my Rixo dress with my little white trainers and we've got seashells here. Of course, I had to bring it um, to a little seaside town. I've just tied my and other story silk shirt around it just for additional warmth i'm not really sure whether to bring my suede um biker jacket with me or not i really don't want to carry it around but i'm worried that it might really cool down in the evening especially right next to um the coast so and finally we've got my little lfa bag so let's head out because as i said we're both absolutely starving <laughs> How incredible is the sky looking right behind me? It's so moody and atmospheric and I really love it. We were just saying how lucky we were with the weather having experienced Whitby in the sunshine when we went up to the Abbey and also this lovely um, moody gradient behind me. My eyes are watering. <laughs> um, so we had dinner at we didn't really plan didn't really plan the day or the weekend much at all but we kind of looked up some highly recommended places and we went to a <laughs> quite dated um little fishery it was lovely like yeah i don't mean it all too negatively it was very dated they had kind of very dated leather seats and these uh, marble tabletops um, it was delicious it was absolutely delicious and we kind of enjoyed the fact that it wasn't all too modern or fancy or polished because yeah I really like uh, Whitby for just uh, being in a yeah a bit more of a traditional feel and um, traditional in the sense that they quite literally haven't changed anything uh, not traditional by design specifically so we are currently just walking down the seafront which again i've got lots and lots of clips of um and we walked past all of the arcades by the seafront shane actually suggested that we do this after dinner and i'm so glad he did because it's been a wonderful wonderful walk the arcades were a strange experience kind of like neon <laughs> um 
lights flashing neon flashing lights you're making it sound too good it's those big light bulbs <laughs> yeah yeah um i've not seen so so many in one place normally i'd be quite up for like a fun little game they've got some bowling in there i do love a little um basketball hoop to shoot a few hoops into anyway we're approaching a busier area so i'm gonna Shall catch up with you later i've done pretty well thus far <laughs> We did end up going into the arcade, played, shot a few hoops, didn't we? We did. Yeah. We did ask Shane to film, but he didn't do it in landscape, so I apologise for that in advance. So, excuse the boiling kettle, but we popped into the shop to get some snacks. We just needed some toothpaste, but we picked up a few bits to just um, make the movie tonight a little bit more enjoyable. Good morning, everybody. We are all packed and ready to go, and we're gonna say goodbye to this wonderful little Airbnb. Head out, firstly get coffee and breakfast. Not to sound like a cliche, but very, very much needed because we had some very, very noisy neighbors. Um, and explore some more. Bye bye, Airbnb. <laughs> again so we went to Sherlock's which was recommended to us by a friend and had breakfast there it was really really good and the atmosphere inside was really really good we sat um, nearer to the entrance because we were the first people there but the cafe filled up so so quickly um, and it's a bit of a shame that we didn't realize that you could go further in um, because I walked past as I was going to the loo and um, it looked so so sweet inside further down and now we're just having a little wander around no particular aims just um walk around and take in the beautiful scenery
Have you been scammed? For the second time? Yeah. Did you try to put another pound in? Did you see me just get scammed then? We came across a really beautiful map that they were selling for a pound and we wanted to get one as a keepsake for our little memory box that we have going and they just took my pound and didn't give me a map. <laughs> We've just been to the beach behind me. I hope I'm being loud enough. It was such a lovely, lovely beach. So incredibly peaceful, so clean. The sand felt really good. <laughs> we were wearing our shoes, but oh, the sand just looks beautiful and we've got lots of families there so I did take quite a few clips but I'm conscious that people just kind of want to relax and children want to play in the sand and we're gonna leave them to it. I think it's one o'clock now so we're gonna sit down somewhere with a couple of coffees um, and relax for half an hour or so. Hey guys, so as you would have noticed, the vlog ends rather abruptly and I thought I would jump on at the end and tell you what happened to the remainder of our trip because it did end very very unexpectedly. So as you would have seen we had a wonderful wonderful time in Whitby, we really enjoyed ourselves, really fell in love with Whitby, it's a lovely lovely place to visit so I highly recommend and before we were heading home we thought we'd spend the remainder of the afternoon in Robin Hood's Bay which is another seaside town very close to Whitby, renowned for its beautiful views. It's got a lovely beach, lots of lovely cafes where you can sit down, grab a coffee, really take in the views. Um, you can hike from Whitby to Robin Hood's Bay which hopefully we'll do at some point because we didn't go to Robin Hood's Bay. As we were boarding the bus which heads to Robin Hood's Bay um, on the way to Scarborough, 
we thought um, since we're getting the train from Scarborough we'll hop off at Robin Hood's Bay have a look around then hop back on the bus several hours later head to Scarborough get our train and um, return back to York so that didn't quite happen because as we were boarding the bus we bought our ticket and I receive a notification from the Track and Trace app, which has let us know that we have been in contact with somebody who has COVID and therefore we need to self-isolate. So we have been self-isolating now for five days. And um, I've got to say the first few hours of receiving that notification I felt a roller coaster of emotions um I began to really worry because I had my first dose of the vaccine a week prior and as you know your first dose does give you some level of protection but it does normally take two weeks for that to kick in fully so I had some level of protection for sure but I still was very very worried Shane is fully vaccinated so for him it was a bit of a breeze um it was a disappointment not to have really rounded off our trip as we had expected um but uh, he wasn't worried about his health. I was slightly worried that I may have caught COVID, which hopefully I haven't. I've done a few lateral flow tests, which have come back um, negative and I haven't felt any symptoms. Um, but I did wake up that morning feeling really, really tired, feeling quite anxious. And so that alert really sent me into a spiral of convincing myself that I have COVID um, or may have COVID um, and as I say it's been five days into self-isolation fingers crossed that nothing transpires um, and then I think for the remainder of the day I began to feel really really anxious about completely unrelated things uh, which did not feel good so wasn't the best end to the trip and please don't take this as um, me complaining about the self-isolation because I know that it's so necessary. It's just frustrating and you'll know if you've been through the process. Um, we kind of returned to no food whatsoever in my flat that I got a bit of anxiety of that. The next day I felt fine and everything was okay and luckily I have a job where I'm able to self-isolate and still work so that's not an issue and um, I say that because I guess that's one anxiety that I didn't have. I could just go to work the following morning and it would be perfectly fine. So in many ways, I'm so fortunate to be in a position where I'm able to self-isolate in my lovely little flat. Um, I enjoy my time here and um, ooh, sorry for my arms getting quite tired. My finger specifically, uh, my little finger just kind of holding the base. So I hope you've enjoyed the rest of the vlog. Nonetheless, I apologise that it didn't include Robin Hood's Bay because I'm sure that would have added some additional gorgeous, gorgeous views. But I hope you've enjoyed the remainder of the vlog nonetheless and I will catch you next time. Thanks again for watching. Bye!